हाईलाइट चैनल ऑफ द रणवीर शो दिस इज टी आर एस क्लिप्स डू यूज चैट जी पी टी योर सेल्फ ये we had rajiv malhotra and abhijit chavda appear on the show mm-hmm. they both a little afraid about indians using chat gpt because again it's that drainage of data data is the new oil etc uh you can speak at a high level in terms of engineering on this also so i would love for you to give your own vision of indian ai companies one two what's the real deal with gpt should we be afraid in the same way that we were afraid of say tiktok with it uh and three as an engineer do we have the talent to actually make world class ai companies yeah so the first thing about this is the underlying raw material if you want to call it for everything including the data economy or ai is personal data data of people in the monsoon session we will legislate the digital personal data protection bill which is going to create a total behavioral change amongst all these companies who collect data from indians so what uh, was said on your show that i am very worried about technology uh, data being transported and exported will come to a grinding halt people cannot export data people cannot misuse data there will be no exploitation of personal data any more after this bill is passed so that comes to a grinding halt now comes what are the real issues with chat gpt in ai and then everybody has a point of view and some people say it's great some people say it's very bad but with anything that is new technology and is disruptive and we there will always be people who are scared of it and there will always be people who say no no let's exploit it what we are saying is today we see ai as a very big deal for a digital economy and i use a phrase that ai is the kinetic enabler of india's digital economy we have a trillion dollar digital economy goal and ai is certainly going to help us get there mm okay. AI innovation India can certainly lead the world and we are doing a number of things including what I told you about India AI however it is clear like anything in technology and more so in AI AI also has the potential to do bad things much more than any other technologies thus far and you're saying this as an engineer of course of course mm. and i have seen this deep fakes i can create a video of you tomorrow uh in with uh, half in an hour, uh, and no no i can say you saying the most abusive things about three of your colleagues mm. and it will be absolutely authentic looking it will be a video but it will be totally designed developed by ai it will mm. be your voice so therefore ai we say needs guardrails what mm. does guardrail mean that we will define in the government of india in the in the forthcoming digital india act what are the no go areas for ai right so what in technical terms it's called we will regulate this to the prism of user harm hmm. that you can do whatever innovation you want you can create whatever platform you want in ai you can have large language models you can do whatever predictive generative ai whatever however you are responsibility is to make sure no harm is caused to any user hmm. so we will create these guardrails and i think in a lot of ways we are leading the world in this conversation yeah did you see the sam altman thing with the senate where he says that we are very aware yeah, yeah. about the dangers yeah, of so this. somebody asked me and i said look uh, sam altman is a very bright person and he is obviously very knowledgeable in ai but we also have our views on uh, how ai should be regulated and maybe both of us don't agree on everything mm. he his point that i agree with is that ai cannot be unregulated uh he also has a point that uh, the ai should not be regulated like the eu wants to regulate it on use case basis but we have a view that we want to regulate it through user harm he he is coming here in june he he is going to meet me for sure and we will have a chat with it uh, chat with him and we will share our views on it but i am certainly not and prime minister 100% is not going to come in the way of any new innovation simply because we are frightened hmm. we will embrace new invention new innovation we will embrace disruption but we will create all the protection and guardrails that are required to ensure that that innovation does not disrupt cause harm to any of our 1.2 billion indian digital nagriks is that the key aspect of your focus at this phase of life it is it is uh, clearly digital india act is a very very important part of the legislative work that we are going to do first week of june we plan to start the actual consultation for the first time in the history when we 
we have done consultation about a law with the people before the law was even prepared mm. so we've done three rounds of pre consultation where a lot of youngsters came in and lawyers young lawyers young uh, users and they've all given us our their views and we are basically using that to architect this new contemporary law called the digital india act okay uh what do you need young engineers to help you guys with uh both in terms of the economy and in terms of whatever ai related stuff the government is doing two things i think and i say this uh, whenever i meet uh, go to colleges universities first of all this is a magic moment it is an inflection point in the history of india it's the most exciting time for them embrace entrepreneurship don't sit around and second guess yourself if you have an idea you're a techie you're in let's say you're an agriculturalist and you have a technology idea for agriculture or health or medicine just jump at it mm. the worst thing that can happen is that you fail but those two years three years that you spend in failing will be better than any post doctoral phd masters that you will ever do mm. so this is the magic time for entrepreneurship and startup so that's the one message i give second i say to all of them that entrepreneurship and uh, enterprise and startups is not just simply about saying i want to start a company you must be good in that subject you must have skills you must learn read if i have books in my office it is not basically because i want to show off the books it is because these books keep one current keep you competitive that when i go to a meeting with the ec that i can basically say india has a perspective india knows about the future of tech as much as they do or if not more so today's entrepreneurs have to be very very smart mm. smart not just street smart and business smart but smart in terms of deep knowledge of the space that they are going to embark on so i say these two a magic moment for entrepreneurship b be smart get smart get the right skills there are many programs today to get skills be skilled upskill reskill uh, and be very very knowledgeable i'm 100% sure that you know about ai a little more than most people mm -hmm. why didn't we see a brown person or an indian make a chat gpt if we are truly supposed to be one of the smartest countries etc as we are the techies no. and and what's stopping us from creating it right now no ai I, i must tell you ranveer ai is not just about an idea ai has as is why did ai take 40 years to suddenly manifest itself into something that is a touch and feel product why because one of the things about ai is two things are very important for ai one is what we call data sets okay the second is what we call ai compute you need huge amounts of computing resources computational power computational like, which power. is actually physical power It's physical computer racks of servers mm. uh, gpus ppus paisa you, you uh, need money ha uh, money for those racks mm. money for those servers and for those servers you need data sets which is data that you have collected from people for that data sets the internet should have been grown to a critical mass where everybody is on the internet and giving the data mm. so all this was not in place 40 years ago that was not even in place 10 years ago so now like a perfect storm the internet penetration is high people are using more and more the internet and giving their data and data sets are being collected in in billions and billions of giga tera bytes of data are now available and finally because of companies like nvidia and google and so on and so forth there are these gpus and ai compute factories that have been built that can build on those data sets and create these generative ai platforms so it requires millions of money and those who are interested amongst your audience should read a book called genius makers it is the story of modern day ai how google microsoft uh, meta all fought uh, to get to ai in the last 5 to 7 years mm. and how google prevailed in a lot of ways uh, and then open ai prevailed after microsoft made the investment because they could really build these compute capacities okay yeah cool. love first principles thinking yeah. uh, and very few people can talk at this level so i appreciate okay. that So TRS Clips has all sorts of videos and all sorts of playlists. Make sure you explore the channel by subscribing and heading to our homepage and reading through all the playlists.